Hey guys, Dennis here with Revog Games. I'm joined by Josh Reveyors, all the way in South Africa. Yes, and another week and another game podcast from us talking about the latest in gaming news and releases. So some some news coming out. So I think we're going to talk about um, obviously the PlayStation Plus. They kind of revealed uh, the games. We're going to talk about uh, the whole FIFA uh, EA split. We're going to talk about uh, what else? Oh, the Halo season finale. I saw it. You haven't, but I'm going to comment on that. And uh, a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Um, let's get started with the PlayStation Plus. So obviously mm -hmm. we know they're doing a whole rebranding. They're going to do a whole like kind of relaunch of the service soon. Um, the one thing we do know is that they're not going to do day one releases, um, much to uh, some of the disappointment of people, including myself. But they are, they just kind of released a list of their games that are going to be on the service. And, you know, they're talking about their, the ones from the first party studios and then, you know, their third party partners. So, Here's some of the kind of the notable stuff coming out. Um, it's actually a pretty good list. Um, I guess the one notable exception is Last of Us 2 is not on there. Uh, but they do have The Last of Us, The Last of Us Remastered. They have the Spider-Man game. They do have the Spider-Man Miles Morales, which is a recent game. They do have Ghost of Tsushima. They have Death Stranding. They have the Demon Soul, um, Souls uh, uh, reboot remaster. They have God Wait, of the War. Demon have they got the Demon Souls remaster or what, whatever really? the the re the re did. That was, I mean, that, that was like the that was uh, like the PS5 launch, like not a PS5 launch game, but it was more yes, geared yes. towards the PS5. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's actually pretty. That's big. I didn't think that was going to be on there. Yeah, I mean, that's they have big. a lot of you know the stuff that you'd want the Uncharted, you know, all the Uncharted games. Va the uh, thing that I think jumped out the most for me is Valhalla because I don't know about their ties to Ubisoft. I just know. If, man, I, I, I wish that um, Sony could acquire Ubisoft purely just so that I like Ubisoft can get rid of their Uplay, not Uplay service. They, um, is it Ubisoft Plus? I don't know. They have their, whatever own, their, they have their own Game Pass. Yeah. They have whatever their service is. It's the worst service ever. It's here's the thing. First of all, there's not enough on it because I used it for a month and I played. Mm -hmm. Well, I, there were like two big games in there. I finished them in a month and. Yeah, it's just there's nothing keeping you there. It's just also like a really trash service, and Uplay has always been known to be trash. Look, so if if PlayStation could buy them and integrate them completely into their service, I'd be I'd be happy. I'm not too sure because all this stuff is also going to be on the Xbox as well. Uh, so basically, Ubisoft mm -hmm. is doing like a Ubisoft whatever their service is called is a Game Plus or Plus or whatever Uplay. You Ubisoft. Plus. Oh, that's right. We were just we were going to talk about this. Yeah. Yeah, so anyways, they're going to have it on Xbox as well. Not the full thing, but like yeah. their classic games or whatever. So I don't know if that this doesn't necessarily mean a closer relationship with Sony. Um, but yeah. you're right. The issue, I don't have an issue in terms of like opening up different game stores, whatever, Steam, Epic. Uh, my issue is if they aren't, you know, done well. You know what I mean? Like they yeah. aren't the stores well, that, aren't. That's the issue with UPlay. Like, mm -hmm. well, I mean, look. It, here's the thing: them coming to console is big for them because I believe previously it was just on PC. Like that was the only option you could have. Like they weren't even advertising it. I just happened to know about it because I was, mm -hmm. I was actually I wanted to buy Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and then when I was about to purchase it, uh, purchase it on Ubisoft, I saw the option mm -hmm. uh, of their streaming service, and I was like, well, I can finish the game in a month. I'd rather. Buy the game. For, uh, I'd rather pay for a month of their of UPlay Plus or whatever it's called. I, mm -hmm. Forgive me. Um, let me make sure. Yeah, Ubisoft Plus. Um, I bought myself a month of that. Finished Valhalla. I really enjoyed it. But then, a, yeah. The, but the but the actual system was trash. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. like the like not sorry, sorry not the system the app the actual app like you uh, you play Ubisoft Plus. It was horrible using it. Like the interface is actually horrible. But then moving to console is a big plus for them because. Um, I, I just first of all think that if it is what I think it is, I have a feeling it'll be integrated. Like U uh, Ubisoft Plus coming to Sony, it'll be integrated into the store, much like mm -hmm. EA Play was as well. So it's going to be because it's tied to their store, you don't have to worry about like the bugginess of the app. Like my issues were uh, on PC, games wouldn't would install, games wouldn't uninstall. 
Like I have an <laughs> issue with EA, with EA Play right now. Like I have a game installed on EA Play and I can't uninstall it. Like yeah, I, it's f- I physically can't. Even if I go to like the add remove function of Windows, mm-hmm. I can't remove it. And it's like, okay. it, uh, it's it's so screwed. It's just it's just stuck there. It's there's no way of getting rid yeah, of it. Yeah, that's terrible. And I had the same. I had the same issue with like Ubisoft Plus. But once again, if they're on con, like I don't see these issues happening on console. So it'll be good for them. Maybe they'll make some money. My, my, but there, the big issue is is that there's just nothing on Ubisoft Plus. Like I mean, they said you there's like 27 games. <laughs> That's yeah, like so so that so that is my the my theory and prediction of how streaming services for movies and televisions are is the same with uh games. So which is all these small streaming services. So you got the big dogs, right? You got uh, Netflix obviously, you have uh HBO Max, Apple Plus, um Amazon Prime, Hulu, you have all those big guys. Then you have smaller ones, right? There's like AMC Plus. I think Paramount Plus is like, I would say like an in-between. It's not a big dog, but it's not like totally small. Anyways, these smaller ones cannot survive. They're eventually going to have to merge or yeah. collaborate or license or whatever they're going to do to a bigger service because eventually people are not going to want to be subscribed to so many. I mean, I have a bunch, yeah. but I'll be honest with you. A bunch of the ones that I have are like either I got really good deals on in terms of a yearly subscription or I got free through like um, uh, one of other another service that I, I'm paying for. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some pro- promotional event. Yeah, like I got a year before, free or six we, months free. Yeah. Before we talk more about it, I... I do want to point out that uh, Ubisoft Plus does actually include more than 100 games. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming that's because they have more, more console games than PC because on their PC version, there is bare. Mm-hmm. There's nothing. Yeah. My, mind you, I haven't used their service since Valhalla came out, which was a while ago, so it may have gotten better. But the, the issue is, once again, there's not a, there's not enough IP. Even if they mm-hmm. do have a lot of older games, like that's like like that's that's not a selling point. I mean, look at PlayStation Now. People weren't using PS Now or what's now going to be PS Plus, they weren't mm-hmm. using it because, yes, it's it might be fun to play some old PS2, PS3 games, but it's not the first thing everybody thinks of, you know? Not like... Most people play older games for nostalgia. You mm-hmm. know, the younger kids aren't going to be like, wow, I can't wait to play a PS2, PS2 game today, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay. So you got to have uh, that new stuff. You got to have new stuff coming in all the time as well. Yeah, it's my same philosophy on uh, cons. Like, going to Comic-Con, like, I go to Comic-Con so I can get access to marvel dc star wars uh all everything right like i want everything in one place because i i don't have the time money and energy quite frankly to go to like yeah a dc con and a marvel con and a whatever the same thing with these streaming services even though it takes less energy but still people want like everything in one big service obviously PlayStation exclusives and Xbox exclusives are just never going to match or merge, you know, together in a service. But yeah, when it comes to these smaller ones like EA Play or Ubisoft or, or Ubisoft or whatever, you eventually you see, these things are just going to need to be yeah. merged into these larger I do, services. I do think, all right, well, I mean, I don't think that they'll do this, but like, I think that they'd be smarter than to do it is for PlayStation Plus to partner with Ubisoft Plus the same way that EA Play and uh, Game Pass are tied together. Like if you have if you have Game Pass, uh, well, I, I guess if you're on console, if you have Game Pass Ultimate, you get uh, EA Play with it, you know. Mm-hmm. Or if you're just on PC and you have Game Pass or PC, you get EA Play with it for free. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure that like they split the like the costs are like I'm sure EA gets a bit of that money that that monthly subscription fee because I don't know how how else they do it. It's got to be that thing. Yeah. So hopefully they can do that too where. Maybe they'll just add a new PS Plus tier that would involve Ubisoft Plus in the future. I guess like that's like like that's one of the only things that I can see them doing to be competitive. Because like I said before, when they announced this PS Plus thing, like from a console perspective, from Sony thinking, "Hey, we have the PlayStation. We need games on the PlayStation. We need users on the PlayStation." This new tiered system for PS Plus makes sense, but I still feel like they were dumb to not think about everybody that doesn't have a PlayStation because PS Now being a streaming service meant that people could 
play their PlayStation 2 or 3 games. They could stream it onto their PC. They could stream it onto their X Xbox, their mobile phone. Anything that ha that could support a Microsoft Edge browser, or any I, I believe any browser, could use uh, PlayStation Now, the streaming service. But they've, got, they've completely gotten rid of it. Now, the only way to get that service, you can still get that service, mm -hmm. but you now have to pay double compared to what it was. You know That's what I mean? That's crazy. And they, it's just they, like, like, here's the thing. I'm sure they got rid of it. It's, it's not that they're dumb. It's not like they just didn't consider it. They just probably, I'm assuming it must just be the money coming from PS Now was so little that it's like they mm -hmm. don't care about all the people that use it on PC or Xbox or mobile. Mm -hmm. They don't care about the people that are streaming it. They're just like, hey, the, the money we make from that is so little, we don't care about getting rid of yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so the library itself is pretty good. Um, you know, you have Returnal, uh, you have Shadow mm -hmm. of the Colossus. Um, yeah. And then third party, like I mentioned, as you mentioned Assassin's Creed Bahal, you got Arkham Knight, you got Far Cry 4, For Honor, Guardians of the Galaxy, which, you know, was on Game Pass or is on Game Pass, Outer Wilds, Red Dead 2, uh, Resident Evil, you know, um, so there is a good, big, things, big things, a good catalog and library on there. Far Cry 3 Remaster, that's actually pretty yeah. cool. Um, and, you know, that's, there's that's a, a great game. original PS3 games via streaming. Um, I guess... It's a no-brainer if you have a PlayStation. It's like it's like Game Pass, right? If you mm -hmm. own an Xbox console it, and you have the extra, like, 5 or 10 bucks to spend on Game Pass, it's a no-brainer. Do it. That's It's the same thing with PS Plus. Like, here's the thing. Even PS Plus before the time was worth it. It's Like, it's always been worth it. If you have a PlayStation, it's worth it. Their previous system of like having getting two free games a month, you know, you're essentially paying sixty dollars for the year, getting two free games a month. Sometimes they're big games. You're that you're walking away with like twelve games a year for free. You know what I mean? Like that was already a pretty good deal. Um, it just wasn't a good deal when you considered Game Pass once Game Pass shut up. So now that this is here, like yeah, if you own a PlayStation, if you if you if you own a PS4 or a PS5, do it. Like the, especially because they give you the tier system, so you don't even have to go for the fullest tier. As far as yeah, I, know, I, I that, honestly, you, you, it, you it, still it, need PS Plus for it, online play. So you're it depends. Get it, it depends on how many of these games in the library that you've played. Because remember, the big difference between this and Xbox Game Pass is the day one stuff. Mm. Uh, That's true. Like, That's like true. an Xbox Game Pass is a, is a no brainer, right? Because you're getting day one stuff even like this year i know everyone's um disappointed and upset about starfield and redfall getting d delayed so there's no big triple a title this year but even these small titles indie titles are getting day one releases on um xbox game pass that you can still play yeah. i don't know in terms of third party or indie games in that regard for playstation well, plus I ch yeah but they're I check Go for it. I was just going to say, but their AAA titles we know for a fact are not. Like when God of War Ragnarok comes out supposedly later this year, that thing is definitely not going to be on PlayStation Plus for, yeah. I don't know, I I'm guessing six months to a year is my guess, you know? Um. Yeah, it's because they're not they're not willing to take the, the loss. Yeah. Like Game Pass had to take a, a like, I, I'm sure they're in the green now maybe, but they had to take a loss. Yeah. For a very long time, they took they took a loss with a gear putting Gears of War Day One on there. That was a, a, a loss for that. It was a game for it was good for Game Pass, but bad yeah. for Microsoft. Yeah. Say, uh, uh, and it was and it was that way for a while. Like only now we're starting to see the like Microsoft is starting to see the return on that. You know what I mean? So Sony doesn't want to take the risk. I understand that they don't um, have the, the cash thing. reserves that Microsoft it, exactly. Has, Microsoft so. has deep pockets. They have very deep pockets. You yeah. know what I mean? Um. So yeah, so there's that issue there. Um, yeah, like I said, if you have a PlayStation, it's a, it's still a good deal. You're gonna get the PS Plus thing, but with Game Pass, you check it. Like at least for me, I check Game Pass almost every day because sometimes you never know. Like they'll add something new or something cool. Um, I will say as well, as someone who has used PlayStation Now mm -hmm. before a few times before it was turned into uh, PS Plus, which uh, the new tier of PS Plus or whatever it is. Um, I I would literally buy myself a month just to play, just to like binge all the old Ratchet and Clank games. So like there is a big market for people that'll play older games, but that that market can't be there forever. Mm -hmm. If you know what I mean, 
Like the people who spend the most money on games are the younger demographic, and the younger demographic doesn't have nostalgia for older games because they're mm. young, you know. Yeah, um, I mean to be honest, it is a good deal. It's not a good as good a deal as as Game Pass because of the whole day one stuff. It's worth it, but for me, I feel like I'm gonna probably wait like a year. <laughs> before i sign up for it yeah even though i'm already on the the low tier playstation plus that gives you the whatever like the 60 dollar a year one yeah yeah i i don't know if i'm gonna upgrade because i think it's gonna cost me i think 60 dollars more to upgrade to the tier where you actually can play the games the unlimited games yeah uh but i own most of the ones that i want to play to be honest mm. um and though like returnal is i don't own that and i want to play it but i don't have a ps5 and I'm not I'm not also, buying PS5 just yeah. for Returnal. I could be wrong as well, but it was one of those things where like when I was using PS Now, it was only streaming. They had only added in the function to download games later on. It was initially just streaming games. Mm -hmm. And it was a very small catalog in the beginning that you could download. Like it was like they're they're lar they had a larger catalog for streaming than they did for download. And the issue and th that's an issue too, where it's like, hey, you know, maybe you wanna you wanna play an older game. But you uh, you don't have the internet for it at the moment, or like your internet's not that good, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, that was the whole thing with the Xbox uh, DRM issue with the digital games mm -hmm. uh, a couple weekends ago, where uh, the Xbox servers went down, and people who own games that were digital could not play them over the weekend because they had DRMs, which I don't get why they don't do. Sucks. I don't know why they don't do like a thirty day you know check or whatever instead of yeah inter internet check yeah like do like a 30 yeah, exactly. day check or at least of, like a doesn't week. need to be doesn't like every be, time you yeah. load it up it doesn't need to be every time oh yeah, yeah a week I or mean, whatever a time week would be great you know yeah a, a time drm check so that something like that doesn't happen um i get i get that with spotify offline i know that's not gaming related but man it grinds my gears where it's like i pay dude, for spotify premium exactly have a bunch of music downloaded and then it's like it'll play but sometimes the um it, it like glitches out and it's like it I don't have any I don't have access to all the music downloaded on my phone because I don't have an internet connection and I'm like but I what's the point of downloading it for offline mode if I can't exactly. play it so it, it doesn't happen it, all the time but it, it when it does a but it it, do, it happens not, yeah. if you download like Netflix movies and TVs like it does it happens with DRM Steam games as well yeah. straight up if you uh, like. Like, well, I think they fixed it now because Steam has a like the offline mode. But say, for instance, if you've never used Steam in offline mode before, it wouldn't default to that. So like if you play if, if there's a game that needs an online activation or like to know that you have it or own it mm -hmm. or whatever, it would just be like start uh, start Steam in offline mode. And then you couldn't start Steam in offline mode yeah. because you're because you needed to be online to start it in offline mode so that you could be using it offline the next. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, um, DRMs. Sure I, I I understand the purpose. They need them. It's just like the checks mm. need to be not like every single time you you load up the the game. It's you know, it's just or even just know. verify it once. Because I can. Yeah. Here's the thing. I can I can understand the issue where it's like someone can if if, you, if if there's a monthly check or a weekly check, it's like hey, they can just unplug their system and leave it offline so that it never has to check again. But it's like. But if it's checked it in the first place, who cares? You, they paid for it, you know. Yeah. yeah. If, <laughs> it just doesn't make sense to yeah. me, man. Um. But yeah. Guess, so this is for. I, I guess. I guess account sharing is an issue as well. But yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Um. So yeah. Uh. For me, I own most of the PS games. The the, the only thing that would make me get it right now is if they were doing day one releases. If I knew. Yeah. Uh, uh, God of War Ragnarok was going to be a day one release on PlayStation Plus, then I would go out and buy a PS5. Like I, I said before, I I just don't have a big motivation. Because I don't know if you've seen, like, Xbox Series X have been more readily available. Not, like, for everybody, yeah. but there's been, like, shipments coming in and people have been picking them up. And PS5, I just heard there was a shipment coming in for people. And, like... I know everyone else is dying and clawing to get one. I had a chance I'm, to get it. I had a man. chance to get Xbox Series X and I turned it down. I was like, nah, I, I, I just don't need to spend 500 bucks on a console that that right now Game Pass and my PC are, are uh, satisfying. Exactly, yeah. So, well, look, I, if, if, I, if, if I had the ability to get a PS5 right now, I wouldn't because 
Like unless it was I, I won it in the competition, I would I just wouldn't play it. I'd I'd play Miles Morales, Re Returnal, and then I'd be done with my PS5. <laughs> like I just wouldn't yes. use it. You know what I mean? Like what else yes. would I? I'm I'm sure there's more, but like off the top of my head, uh, well, yeah, Horizon, the new, uh, Forbidden the new, West, yeah, the new Horizon game. I would love to play that as well. But but once again, it's just not enough games car like current next gen games on PS5 that can justify me buying it. You know? No. Yeah, me either. So anyways, all in all, you know, it's it's a good lineup other than it not having day yeah. one. I was surprised. I don't want to say I was very surprised by the third party uh, games. I did not ex I did not see that coming, at least. the third. Yeah, party it's, it's a good third party. I don't I mean, the list that I saw was kind of a short. It's probably not the full list. It's just kind of the highlights of it. And it's not a bad list. Mm. The only problem is, uh, like I said, I, I don't want to go through the whole story again. But if you heard my story about Microsoft... No, I think that is the full list, by the way. Oh, is it? Okay. That is the full list, yeah. So the whole concept or philosophy is is the whole Microsoft Zoom thing I talked about uh, in last week or the week before. Is basically, if you want to come out with something, you can, you've you got to make it a lot better than what the current competition has. And, it, and PlayStation Plus does not... If you want to say it's equivalent... I won't argue with you. I don't think it is just because of the day one stuff. But let's say you want to say it's equivalent. Still, if you're not the market leader, the, you 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 need to have something a lot better. You can't just be equal to what's already out there. And that's exactly why. Yeah. Not that PlayStation Plus will fail or anything like that, but why it's just not as enticing um, for the average. And I would assume, like, I'm not even like a huge, you know, uh, PlayStation owner slash player. I assume people who are probably have played even more games than I have. So the whole PS plus thing is probably not worth it at this point. Right? Like if I've mm -hmm. already owned or played most of these first party exclusive games, or at least the big dogs, like why I just don't see the purpose in getting it at this point, maybe later on, but I just don't see it right now. I do like their time limited game trials thing where it's like you can try a game out before buying it. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I would get a, a I don't know if I would get the deluxe plan just to be able to have that option of being you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a cool option, but Yeah. Um all right. Uh let's move on to the next subject. So this is something we had talked about before, but it looks like it's Oh, well, we're on the topic. Let's talk about the PS Plus games lineup. Uh, which, what do you mean? Uh, uh, well, it's just the I think uh, it's just the the, the PS Plus lineup for the uh, the month the the free games. I believe. Oh, okay. What is yeah. what are they? I think it's it's Red Dead Redemption Two and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. But no, that can't. Oh. This can't be right. No, no this can't be right. That can't. No. They would I, never I release yeah. two AAA titles yeah. at the same well, I got time. The, what is this article then? New PlayStation Plus game. Oh no, it was just it was just it's a, sorry, it's a different article about what we just spoke about. Never mind. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, moving on. All right. Um All right. Uh, t uh we've been talking about this and it looks like it's it's actually happening, which is the whole EA FIFA split. Um It's kind of funny cuz when I first heard this, I thought I was like, "Man, these two are making so much money. What's the big deal?" But apparently, it must FIFA must be asking for a lot for oh, the, yeah for the license because if EA is willing to be like, they're also, "Nah, yeah, man," they're asking for a lot, a lot, man. I you know I personally don't play FIFA, uh, but I know a lot of people. I mean, it's a huge, huge game that makes tons of money across the yeah. whole world. And... Horrible corporation, though. Horrible yeah. corporation. Well, like, they, FIFA they... itself is. Isn't horrible, it technically? Right? Is it technically supposed to be like nonprofit? But they like it's make nonprofit. A ton... Yeah, but right. they make a shit ton of money. Like like everybody on the Such... board of directors has got like Lamborghinis yeah. and like they got multiple cars, multiple houses, and they're like so it's corrupt. It's a nonprofit organization. So it's one corrupt. of the most corrupt organizations in the world. It's FIFA. Yeah. So the fact that they're asking for more money, it's one of those things where like it's got to like you said it's got to be a lot for EA to be like no we don't want that. But also it's one of those things where like I feel like even if I was a giant corporation, a soulless corporation, from one soulless corporation to another, I would still just dislike working with FIFA because of how absolutely corrupt they are. Um Yeah, so, so it seems yeah. like this split is still happening in it um 
you know, FIFA, yeah. basically, this is funny, and I'll relate it to a different sports a- analogy. But anyways, so FIFA, the CEO, basically, uh, what did he say? He said something about, like... Uh, We're definitely interested in expanding our opportunities in sports, and FIFA has a great brand and an incredible an incredible clout. But we have no current plans to discuss. No, no this is take two, basically saying oh. they, they don't have no plans on... So basically... FIFA is trying to shop around the license to find another mm. developer to take it on. The thing is, is Take Two, which is you know one of the bigger publishers, says they don't aren't interested right now. They probably most places are probably interested in license, but most places do not want to pay the price yeah. for two one two things, one for licensing and two for development. Because remember, they're gonna have to build the game from scratch. EA's mm-hmm. already built this game over many, many generations. They have like everything in place. Or more, you know? So it's kind of like every year for them, they're just kind of updating things here and there, whatever. They have the, they have basically what it is. I think FIFA is kind of uh, shooting themselves in the foot by not yeah. negotiating with EA because they're probably going to find that there's not going to be so many takers uh, on this because of the twofold Who cost. Does- PES Pro Evolution Soccer. Who owns that? Um, Konami. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't see. I it, was gonna man. say because that was the uh, that was like that's the yeah, the developers is Konami. Uh, uh, Pro Evolution Soccer. That was like the big contender mm-hmm. for FIFA against FIFA for years. Has been for years, and there's been some pretty good PES games. Um, I don't even know if they're still going. It's, it looks like the last one they did was 2021. So they are still... It's called eFootball now? What? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, so it's, it's been it's a 30-year 30, 30 partnership between FIFA and EA. I was going to say, it's been a long time, yeah. Um, so EA is still making a football game. They're just not mm-hmm. going to make a FIFA Well, they're still signed on game. for another year. They're still signed on for 2023, I believe. Okay. Like but still. To do a FIFA, a FIFA 2023. But after that, they're still going to, like you said, there's after that, they're still going to make their yearly football game. It's just not going to be FIFA. Yeah. They're going to have to come up with a new. I just can't believe Pez renamed themselves to eFootball. I hate that. <laughs> I hate that so much. Anyways, I figured that that would be like their only other option. Rather than getting a studio to make a... Uh, a soccer game from scratch their best bet is to pick up um i suppose or make a deal with konami seeing as they're the only other people i know of that are in the space and have experience by doing a yearly video game and ea sports already has renamed uh the next game the game after this year's which they're going to call it ea sports fc so basically football club um so they're they're moving ahead. Uh, they're they're banking that people will will buy it without the FIFA title. I mean, it says that they still have nineteen thousand players, seven hundred teams, one hundred stadiums. So the other, I guess, I'm trying to figure out what FIFA is bringing to the table. Since I don't play yeah. the game, can you tell me what does FIFA bring to the table if EA Sports uh, already had and I mean, clout, and then also like the fact that they have every single footballer, like they have the rights to every single footballer, like real, like in real life, like okay, like, but like their their photos, like their identity, like I I, I believe as does... far as I know, like FIFA owns the rights to those like footballers digitally. Like you're not gonna have Cristiano Ronaldo in the next uh ea then who are game. these nineteen thousand plus players that they supposedly will have in in their next game oh Except- because the game will still be the game will people do people play that game there's two types of people that play the game the one type of person is the kind of person that spends a bunch of money making the best ultimate ultimate team possible mm-hmm. um which is the bulk of their money the other person is the person uh who's just going to be playing it on the couch with their friends Mm-hmm. And they just they just want the latest football game to play with their friends on the couch. They don't care who's in it or what they're doing. You know what yeah. I mean? As as long as the mechanics are good. I like, mean, they no said one's they, there sitting. Yeah. They said they're still gonna have Premier League, La Liga, MLS. Uh, so oh, yeah, there's still all literally all the other leagues besides like uh, FIFA. Yeah. But isn't like most of yeah. the 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 high the top level players in those leagues as well? Because I know like. 
I suppose so. I think I know that it's going to be difficult. Like, actually, that's a good question because I never really played much PES. I wonder if, because looking at, yeah, looking at like, oh, well, now it's called freaking eFootball. But looking at that, they definitely have some like actual athletes on it or a part of it. You know what I mean? So apparently EA had to lay off 100 employees after the FIFA split. But if they keep making the game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Okay. So it's got to be different because I'm looking, like I said, here's konami with their new game eFootball, which used to be uh pes i guess they needed to rebrand it i've never I haven't played eFootball though but they have like manchester united oh like they got all the big teams here so clearly like fifa doesn't own their rights which i assume they did um no fifa is just clout it's the name you know what i mean that's it jesus it's it's just it's it's the clout it's the name like that's all they're really contributing and that and i i believe i don't know if if FIFA plays a role, I think FIFA plays a role in it, but the actual live stats, like, I don't, I've never played, like, I don't know if they do it in the NFL games, but, like, they'll have, like, the st the stats in the game will be based off of the current season in football, you know what I mean? Or in soccer, sorry, for any confusion. Yeah. Like, so they have the live stats, and that kind of stuff matters. Yeah. I, I'm, um, I'm just uh, interested because, okay, like, the NFL, right? The NFL... If you don't have the NFL license, you can't obviously you can't use the NFL logo or the name yeah. in your title, but also the teams themselves because they're all like even though the teams are individually owned by owners, they're all part of whatever the NFL umbrella. So you can't like you can't license like a game like the Oakland Raiders, well they're not the Oakland Raiders anymore, but the Las Vegas Raiders. Um yeah football game right it's like under contract it has to be under nfl or whatever so you can't do that and all the, the the players are also in the nfl league which has their own union but you know they're all tied together so you can't do you can't use any of the team names you can't use the nfl uh, name or logo you can't use the players like that's all encompassing but but soccer mm. slash you know world football as everyone everyone calls uh f football in the world um the players are like, you know, playing in all different leagues throughout the year and some here, yeah. some there. And well, there's so there's got to be some loophole because like I just said, Konami, their current football game has like actual players and actual football teams and they're, they have no contract or any deals with FIFA. Mm -hmm. So maybe unless they like decided to go and get individual deals with individual football uh, clubs, I'm not too sure what they did or mm -hmm. how they went around that. But um, but yeah, that like look, if I was FIFA, I would be eyeballing Konami because, like I said, they're the only other people that have experience in it. However, I don't think anybody at FIFA knows what the hell's going on. They just know, hey, we we made a lot of money from those FIFA games. We want more, and I don't think anybody at working at FIFA is kind of clued up into like the whole. Were they asking world. for like a billion yeah. for like yeah, they were how many at, years? Like an un. They were asking for a lot. Of, here's the thing. The reason why they asked that much is because I could be wrong on this, but I think they didn't receive any of the microtransactions. Or if they mm -hmm. did, they'd receive very little. And EA was making more money than FIFA was making from their game, mm -hmm. which makes sense because EA makes the game. So, of course, so well, it's kind of... I think all the risk goes on there. And FIFA doesn't risk anything. <laughs> they don't risk it. Exactly. Like, it's... it's FIFA doesn't do anything. It's just their name. Is, yes. it's, it's, like, slapped onto the thing. It's... it's 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 just the paying for the name. So okay. So it says aside from the name on the cover, they also you can't refer refer to the World Cup. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say like that's the big that's the biggest thing as I, as far as I know is it affects the World Cup and the standings there. So you're not gonna yeah. So you can't reference it. You can still have your country teams though. I'd imagine. I just don't know if they can be like. Yeah, you don't own You know, FIFA doesn't own countries. Yeah. You don't um, own exactly. You can still be like Argentina, team Argentina. And, against, yeah, uh, and they know. still have deals with stadiums and all these leagues. Just not, mm. you know, the world. They're Cup. gonna be incredible. Okay, yeah, EA is so unaffected by this. They're like they're chilling. They're like, who really gives a crap? FIFA, who man? FIFA, <laughs> FIFA is, and FIFA's just lost out on so much money because they're they're dumb and they're greedy. That's all it is. It's a hundred percent all it is. What's, yeah, yeah. FIFA is just dumb and greedy. Like, oh man, it's just like it's just so dumb. Because here's the thing: like I said, if they were smart, they'd go make a deal with Konami because they got PES or well, yeah, e but football dude, now, whatever they call even it. if they but make a deal, to do that. They're not. It's even not going to happen in a year. You know what I mean? That's if, exactly no. 
It's it's going to take a while, and it's going to and then have also a lot like the, the the clout will die out. Here's the thing: like FIFA is big because you know it comes out every year, and there's big marketing towards it, and there's big advertising towards it. The people who marketed and advertised that game was EA. You know what I mean? So they're going to continue to market and advertise whatever football game or soccer game they have coming out that year. Um, whereas eventually there's going to be like a year or two that goes by where we don't have a FIFA game because FIFA has been sleeping. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you said, they're not going to be able to like make a game from scratch with a new studio out okay. of nowhere within the next year. You know, if they did, it's going to be shit. Yeah. But the thing is, they're going to lose that. Like their name is worth a lot of money because of the clout. Oh, no, okay, it's not really clout, but it's a big brand name. It's, yes, it's recognizable. It's and every single year that goes by that we don't have a FIFA game, that recognizability goes down. Like their worth goes down. So they've really like screwed themselves. Okay, so this is what, what what's funny about this, uh, and, and what I'll relate it to is so, the the FIFA president uh, basically said this. I can assure you that the only authentic real game that has the FIFA name will be the best one available for gamers oh, yeah. and football fans. <laughs> The FIFA name this. is the only global original title. FIFA 23, FIFA 24, FIFA 25, FIFA 26, and so on. And the constant is the FIFA name and will remain in forever, for, remain forever and remain the best. Okay, so <laughs> I kind of laughed at this because it reminds me of, um, you know, uh, I don't know how much you follow uh, NBA basketball. But I don't know if you remember when LeBron left uh, the C Cleveland Cavaliers. No. Okay. I mean, you know who LeBron James is, right? Of course, I, I, of course, I know who LeBron okay. James is. Okay. So you know he got drafted by the Cleveland Cavaliers, which is his hometown, and whatever everyone yeah. said it was rigged that they got it. But anyways, you know he went to the finals a couple times. Space but... Jam, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he, <laughs> sorry, sorry. and he, I'm joking. and he, <laughs> and he. Carry on. He didn't win. I mean, LeBron James is arguably the best player. I mean, people say Michael Jordan. Yeah. People say other people. Anyways, he's in the conversation for the best of all time. Well, but at that time, Kobe, he had not. Kobe and LeBron, man. Yeah. They're up there, yeah. He had not won a championship. And so his contract was up. And in the end, he decided to have this whole much to do, like, publicized event. And he basically said, and the famous quote is, I'm going to take my talents to South Beach, which is. Miami he's going to go to uh he went to the Miami Heat where he teamed up with uh Dwayne Wade and uh Chris Bosh and they actually ended up winning two championships um at that time when he left the owner I forgot his name was so pissed off he basically wrote this letter basically like slamming LeBron James and saying we're going to win a championship before LeBron does, <laughs> you know, and you, you know, the Cleveland Cavaliers was basically, if there's no LeBron, they, they wouldn't make the playoffs. You know, it was basically a crap team. It was LeBron single handling, you know, carrying that team into the playoffs and almost winning championships, but didn't. Um, this is what that reminds me of is, is the FIFA president saying, Oh, without EA, EA, we'll be fine. We're, we got the name. We're the best. We're going to make the best. It's like, are you? Because one, you know nothing about game development. Um, it, you know, the cost that you're asking for people to pay is a lot, and EA was willing to do it because they were making so much money and they knew the returns that they were going to make. I don't see FIFA getting the same amount from anybody else, so they're going to mm -hmm. have to cut a deal that's lower, and the development costs, you know they're going to have to like fully invest into this thing and FIFA themselves are not going to do it. Like, please. Yeah. It's look, it really was the best matchup. R r okay. Regardless of how you really look at it, yes. but the EA FIFA matchup was the best matchup. Whatever happens moving forward, the FIFA brand in gaming will never ever make as much money as what it did with EA. Like, I just don't see, I just don't, don't see it happening man i just don't see that like they'll i think it, they'll still be able to make a lot of money but i don't think they'll ever make as much money as what they did with ea mm -hmm. and they don't know that that's the thing that's the, I, that's what i find the most hilarious is that ea does uh, sorry i mean fifa doesn't realize that they don't realize that that moving forward they're never going to make as much money as what they did with ea like mm -hmm. they're just like e even if they screw here's the thing even if they screw some like other they get they screw somebody and they get somebody to actually pay for that absurd amount for the licensing, the game itself will not be nearly as profitable as what it was under EA. Because 
even say what you will about EA's microtransactions, uh, as in, as horrible as they are, in FIFA, in FIFA they clapped. They were amazing. Mm-hmm. I I didn't purchase them, but like th- the amount of money FIFA made through microtransactions, through like uh, cart like pack sales and stuff, it it was mm-hmm. phenomenally high. It was like it was so high. Like even if you had some other big triple A like uh, studio come out to do the next FIFA game, they're not going to get mi- like microtransactions right like they did with FIFA. Whether you agree with micro- microtransactions or not, the way that they were used in FIFA was clearly very profitable. You know, yeah. and it's just, just yeah, a just... system you're not going to be able to get up and running and in a flow not and in a whatever. Year or two. Yeah, it, it's, no. it'll it'll take them forever to get to like to a profitable point. And then, I mean, well, not forever to get a pro, but to get to like a super profitable point, yeah. it'll take them forever. And then, even then, I don't think that they'll make the game will make as much money as the mm-hmm. the current FIFA games do. And like I said, maybe FIFA uh, screws somebody over, or maybe somebody's dumb enough to take them up on their offer, and FIFA does get paid more. But the game no will not be profitable. Yeah. The game will no not one, be. No well, I mean, the game that. won't be as profitable as yeah. it currently is with EA. Yeah. Also, and that says a lot because I hate EA. And also. Next year, not this year, because obviously the FIFA 23 is coming out, but FIFA 20, or sorry, EA Sports FC 24, when that comes out, people are going to pay attention to how much money it makes. Uh, Mm -hmm. If it makes a ton of money and is a smash hit, let's say it like makes 80% of what the FIFA EA game made. That's a win for, for EA. 80% Mm -hmm. and and, license. Yeah. You don't have to pay the licensing and you're making 80%. You're actually making more money, you know? So here's the thing the, as well. Gamers aren't dumb. Like mm. even like the, pe- the your average and who only play sport games and nothing else. You know what I mean? They're mm. not dumb. Like they know that when, uh, when EA sports FC comes out, they know that that's the spir- spiritual successor to FIFA. You know what I mean? They're not going to go. They're not going to like wait a couple years and then buy the new game that has FIFA on it without knowing, hey, this is a completely different company, completely different game. Like I like I guarantee you, not, maybe not 100 percent, but at least like 60 to 80 percent of the people who play FIFA are going to buy EA Sports FC because yeah. they know it's the, because they know it's what they've yeah. been playing for t- the past 20 years. That's the same game you've been playing, you know? EA yeah. has such a good brand name recognition in the sports arena it's like this back when before they bought out the nfl license and this is kind of the reason they bought the nfl license is i contend that the N- the nfl 2k series was actually a superior football game american football game to uh madden nfl or madden whatever year it was um but Madden outsold NFL 2K because everyone knew Madden, everyone knew EA Sports, and it's the brand name recognition is what got people to buy their sports game. Um, and that's why they eventually bought out the license because they saw NFL 2K was, at least to some people like myself, thought it was a superior product, and they were losing market share even though they were still the leader. They're losing market share, and they're like, dude, if we don't you know, do something to stop them it's you know game over um so they bought out the license from nfl for like it was like 10 years which effectively killed uh nfl 2k the series uh nfl 2k tried to do what ea is doing now the only difference is the reason why they failed was they couldn't get uh team names and player names so they're all fake so you know that just killed it, you know. Well, I mean that 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 I mean, you which mean, is not the uh, case in this in this in this regard. I was gonna say that, but like, what didn't uh, the most recent two K NF uh, not NFL? Sorry, I'm talking. I'm thinking of NBA. My bad. Never mind. Yeah, they still have an NBA yeah. game. Uh, they still. Yeah, I was gonna say the the two K NBA games are great. Yeah, uh, they have the NBA and the yeah. baseball. I think believe are still popping, but the hockey MLB, and yeah. the uh, American football are are dead. Uh, anyways, I think we should move on to the next subject. This is something. So Halo, the season finale came out this week and, uh, man, people like I was pretty mixed when this series came out and then it kind of started going downhill for me. And then last week's episode was definitely the worst one. This finale was a lot better, but it's, 
in my mind, still not great. Um, there's a good 15 minutes of it where it feels like Halo, but other than that, it still has issues. It was definitely better. Don't get me wrong. It's, it, I don't know. If, yeah, it might have been the best episode of the series was the, the finale, um, but the one before was not great. And overall, the series just... A lot of people kind of... There's two sides to this. There's the people who are like diehard Halo fans. They're like, dude, this is not Halo. This sucks. And then there's the side that are like, no, that aren't as tied to Halo. And they're like, dude, you only say that because it's not exactly like the game. And to me, I don't think... I don't think that's the reason. It's not because it's not exactly the same as the game. Yes, there's a lot of differences, but I feel like it doesn't even capture the spirit of the game other than these small pocket moments. There are small pocket moments and there's certain things that I like about the show, but overall it just doesn't feel feel like halo and when i mean like feel like halo it actually copies a lot of the design elements very well like the suits and the the vehicles and the weapons and all that stuff and but in terms of kind of the tone in, in this story like i said it doesn't have to be exactly the same but it's just i don't know the, 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 there's just a lot to be desired i know you stopped watching it uh yeah. because you just you weren't feeling it yeah, it was just getting a little dull for me. That was all. And you're not a diehard Halo person either. You're not like a... No. So, you know, this kind of goes against what some of the, the people defending the show are saying. It's, it's not a, it's not purely an issue of this isn't exactly like the game. You know what I mean? Because I yeah. don't believe that's the core issue. I think the core issue, like, like I said, well, for me, though, is just like... If you're watching it as someone who's never played Halo or never even heard about Halo, the show is still kind of a bit dull, in my yeah. opinion. It's a bit slow. I think it has a, it has a pacing issue. And I mean, look, I have a I have a lot of serious gripes with CGI mm -hmm. in the show, but there are some CW shows out there with the worst CGI <laughs> that do great with numbers, and it's usually because the story is good. The acting's horrible, the CGI is horrible, but people watch it because the the story's good, the pacing's good. You're finding out, like there's mm -hmm. like the, you're finding out at like the right amount of time. With this show, it was like the C, the CGI is bad, the acting's not that actually bad. I think the acting's like I think the acting's pretty solid for the most part from mm -hmm. what I saw in the first three or four episodes. Um, the issue was the pacing. Mm -hmm. It just it just like not like I there were too many moments where I was like, oh, I'm just not interested and I'm bored, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm interested, like, I think you said you're still interested in possibly catching up at, at one day. I'll watch it. I'll watch it sometime, yeah. Yeah, some um, there's moments where it feels like Halo, but it's far and few between. I mean, he literally, Master Chief literally does not put on his helmet for, like, 95% of the show. Like, he walks around sometimes in the suit without the helmet <laughs> for no reason. Like, he'll pilot the, 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 um, the Pelican with his helmet off. Um, but I mean, he's wearing good, the suit. Good for, good for him for the money because he obviously would have been paid less had the ma had the helmet been on. Stunt double would have been used, uh, and he would have just been doing ADR and like he would have been doing the voice acting in a little booth somewhere, you know. And he would have been paid less. So at I will say, good for him. Like so, at, the, at the end of the day, yeah, it kind of leaves on kind of a cliffhanger, you know. Will I watch season two? Yes, but I think. Season two maybe is going to be a, a touch and go situation for me. It's going to be like, oh, I will start it. I'll see where it goes. But it almost feels like this because I'm interested in you seeing this final episode as well, because there is like 15 minutes where they, they full on do the whole Halo Master Chief in combat fighting the Covenant and where it kind of feels like Halo. It almost feels like they're just saving all their money just to do these sequences. Um and in the show, it's only, it's actually only happened three times. Um, the season finale, um, the season premiere, and like uh, one of the middle episodes, you know? And it's like, it almost feels like they just build up to these particular moments, do them for about 10, 15 minutes, and then that's it. And that's kind of what you get for, uh, for the season, you know? So, 
Anyways, if anyone's watching, I'd like to know your opinion on the Halo, especially now that the season one is done. Like, what do you think of it? Are you, are you a Halo fan or not? And what you thought about the entire season and how it ended up? Like I said, final episode was a lot better than most of the other episodes. It may have been the best one, but it still still has uh, some issues. Um, I just remembered... Uh... I don't know if we spoke about this just before filming or if it was in the beginning of this podcast, but I think I remember the studio you were talking about that you said what they made a statement about um, the, uh, the the Roe versus, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not to clue up on it, but the abortion rights case. I think it was Insomniac because they said they tried to get Sony to make a statement, but they yes. didn't, they wouldn't. They uh, wouldn't this is on the me. Me and Josh were talking yeah, about we spoke offline. About it before the time, yeah. We're talking about uh, Bungie's freedom because Bungie had put out a, a statement on social media um, on Roe versus Wade, and basically Insomnia cannot do that because uh, Sony is kind of a neutral. They want to be neutral, and you know Sony owns Bungie uh, now, or or they will soon. But basically, they cannot. T- the kind of freedom yeah. that Bungie probably agreed to being sold is basically like we do exactly what we want to do. You just own the IP and own, you know, the it's profits. Weird because it seemed like it, it seemed like well, I guess because Sony didn't want to take a stance. Because here's the thing: Insomniac pledged fifty thousand dollars, and then Sony did pledge the other mm-hmm. fifty thousand dollars, but they didn't want it to be public. Mm-hmm. Which is interesting. It t- tells you a lot about politics and mm-hmm. how people want to get involved and don't want to get involved. Anyways, I just thought I'd quickly mention that. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's move on also to uh, video game TV news. Uh, the Resident Evil official teaser trailer dropped, um, which is coming out on July 14th. I have to say I liked it. I mean, I can't really tell much about the story in it, but it, it looks a lot better than that movie that just came yeah. out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that, that I'm kind of wor- I'm kind of worried that the the kind of a uh, negative reaction to that movie is going to hurt this Netflix series, but who knows? But this actually looks pretty cool. I'm going to check it out because I wasn't too hyped it to looks watch like a, the movie. Like it looks but like a high budget Netflix. I mean, it, it looks is on better. Netflix, but it, it, looks it looks better like than a, the it, movie. Yeah. It looks it, uh, by far, but it does look like a high budget Netflix sci fi series, which is exactly what it is. So yeah. it's funny that that's exactly the feel I get from it. You know, it, it looks solid, man. Yeah. It, um, <clears throat> I think the the. I think that's the importance in finding a director with a clear vision as mm-hmm. well, um, who doesn't like mess around. Because the the issue with that, with the in my opinion, the the Resident Evil movie, was a uh, lighting make made or break. There was like no continuity with like you'd walk, there'd be like one hallway would look dark from one angle, then from the other angle, that the hallway looked completely different, and mm. like it's like certain th- immersion breaking things, you know, and like bad shots as well. I just think they had a bad crew working on that movie. Whereas this looks like. It just looks solid. It looks like really solid, you know? Yeah. Um, so I will be checking that out July 14th, not too far away. Um, all right. Uh, this one just popped up today. I put it a little further down the list because it's not a true confirmation. But anyways, uh, Norman Reedus kind of confirmed a sequel to Death Stranding 2. Uh, he basically said, oh, we just started working on the second one. Um, I he said maybe it took me maybe two or three years to finish all the mocap sessions and everything. It takes a lot of work and the game came out. So he's talking about uh, the first one. It won all these awards. It's huge, huge thing. So we just started part two of that. So, uh, you know, uh, it sounds yeah. like part two, but this is not official. You know, Kojima is not saying this. Uh, I mean, it's probably look if if the dude, dude if he's working on mocap, it, yeah. if he's doing mocap work, it means yeah. it means they're going to yes. be making. Look, if it's not a sequel, it's going to be some super high end DLC, but it's probably a sequel. Yeah, I, they sold five million copies. Um, I think more once it came to PC, probably. Yeah, it seemed to yeah. have sold quite well on PC. You know, I particularly was not a huge fan of the game. I thought it looked great. It, the music was great. I just, you know, the, I think the gameplay just wasn't for me. Um, maybe it, it got it better was, later it on. Tedious. It was n- no, yeah, <laughs> no, it was I mean, just I, very tedious. I mean, I played a good four or five hours of it and it just, the story is uh, great. The story yeah. is fantastic. It's phenomenal. Yeah. But in my opinion, you're better off watching it on YouTube. Yeah. Look like it's the thing is the game is fun for some people. I've had a lot of friends play it. 
most of the people were like it's tedious and boring mm -hmm. other people were like I, they love the challenge they truly mm -hmm. love the challenge of lugging so much freaking gear on your back and trying not to drop was it the, all they not, were like not, oh, it's not fun for i don't me. know yeah, but I think, turn. but then again, all, all everybody I know that enjoyed that game are also the type of people that enjoy games that punish you. You know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, what, what's a good example? Like Bennett Foddy getting getting over it with Bennett Foddy, Jump King, like those games that are like meant to make you r like lose and rage. You know? Mm. Yeah, Anyways. not for me. Um, all right, so a bunch of small stuff here we can go through really quickly. Um, so uh, let me see. Do, 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 do. This one. I forgot the name of this group, but they basically made, uh, they kind of turned Cyberpunk 2077 in on the Unreal Engine. It's not really 2077. They just copied the kind of the look and feel. Yeah, sure, I think they took a lot of the assets, but a lot of it is very different. If you watch the video, the, the point is, it looks sick. It looks crazy. It looks. Yeah. It looks. Some of it looks real. Like I'm, I have it on my second monitor right now, and it's insane how this looks. If Cyberpunk 2077 looked like this, I don't even think I would care about the glitches because I, I would like I would be able to just stand on a corner and, and watch the city because this looks insane. It also looks insanely real, but it leads me to believe of like maybe Cyberpunk will look like this one day. Maybe yeah. like five or ten years. Like who knows? Look, they're working on a Witcher three. Un Unreal Engine. Well, the next Witcher is, is going to be Unreal Engine five, and they are working on like an, a next gen update for Witcher three. They'll probably be like, a, even though Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven was designed for next gen, they'll probably be like eventually another next gen update. So maybe it will look like this one day. Yeah. So this but Unreal five engine, uh, uh, yeah, Unreal Engine five kind of demo. I'll be honest, like the environments look great, but the environments already look pretty good in the yeah. Cyberpunk. To me, it's the, it's the faces. faces. That look yeah. yeah, they use they the the meta human. They use the meta human creator uh, in Unreal Five, which I've tried to like kind of dabble in. Um, but yeah, it's insane, man. Yeah, it's insane it, how cool that looks. I will say, like, they got cooler cars though than the actual Cyberpunk game, because they got like flying cars, which there isn't in Cyberpunk. Obviously, the lighting is a lot better yeah. in this, course, in this yeah. version. A lot uh, of it looks like it's pre-rendered, though, you know? Yeah. Like, half the video, it looks like it's in real time in Unreal Engine. And then some of it looks like it's pre-rendered in Unreal Engine. But, yeah, it looks great. Just kind of quick little demo. Um, this next one is, you know, if you're Look, a PC... it gets... Well, actually, well, while we're on the topic of that, because I didn't... I have it here as well. I don't know if I'll send it to you, but somebody recreated the first village in Skyrim in Unreal oh, Engine 5. Yeah, oh, and no, it, it, it looks it amazing. So it, it does, like, lead you to believe, believe... Well, not lead you to believe it. It does make you consider and think, like, what would Skyrim look like in Unreal mm -hmm. Engine 5? If it, Even if it's, like, a fan that redoes it themselves, I would play the crap out of that, you know? Um, it looked great, yeah. I'm just excited because everything... Every time I see a tech demo... Mm -hmm. or something recreated in unreal engine 5 it looks incredible so it just gets me so excited for the future of gaming yeah um you just mentioned it, uh witcher 3 basically they have announced that the next gen version the update is going to be available at the end of this year which is a surprise mm. because they had said that it was delayed and the release date was uh next year they didn't say next year. It was indefinite. They just yeah. didn't have a date for it. So we all it all led us to believe. Oh, okay, next year. It's because they uh, they postponed development on it. But I think currently now they're back at it. Like they're back yeah. to working on the next gen update. But that's a postponed development for a short while for something. I forgot what it was. Yeah. So I actually haven't. I, I had bought The Witcher Three uh, on Xbox and I played a little bit of it, but I just never got far into it. Man, it's it's big. It's a big game. Well, yeah. I, I wouldn't say big as in like big open world but like the amount of content it's a big game like it's it's one of those things where like you i know you spend a lot of time playing um elden, elden ring, ring but i have a feeling you could spend a similar amount of time playing the witcher mm. 3 just because of the amount of like lore and content um which is yeah quite so cool. i'm gonna wait for this upgrade and then uh, play it look the game looks then. great right now but i'm looking like the, the update's gonna be an excuse for me to play it again you know what i mean the game yeah, or yeah, yeah. I, what i like oh look okay sidetrack this is not an important thing to mention but i i the the thing that stood out for me the most about the witcher 3 is that you actually regularly have to go and get haircuts and stuff because your hair grows in the game mm. oh, like that's so like go uh, get red dead 2 exactly yeah like but like for me like that was like before red dead 2 came out it was that uh, the witcher 3 so that was like mm -hmm. the first time i saw it. i'd seen it as, as a mechanic before 
but not one that like worked realistically. Like it doesn't, it's not like your hair grows super quick, but like, yeah, you know, if you haven't gone to go get your beard trimmed, it's going to look a bit burly or, you know, mm -hmm. if you, uh, if you get like a, a what's the, like an undercut or something, it's going to grow out, you know, I don't know. I just thought that was so awesome. Um, all right, uh, this next thing for you PC gamers, uh, which Josh and I am, are uh, NVIDIA's RTX 40 series is set to launch as soon as July. That's real soon. But yes. also, the only, yeah, the only thing that I can, uh, the only up, in my opinion, for the, because here's, ah, oh, it's so, it sucks, man. Like, they, I know that they've been trying their best to try to cap these graphics cards so that they can't be used for, Bitcoin mining, mm -hmm. but uh, most recently, I think one of the most recent caps they put on Bitcoin miners that were able to access ninety percent of the GPU's power, anyways. Mm -hmm. Like they eventually, they're able to like jailbreak or get their way through it and access the full graphics card uh, for Bitcoin mining. Mm -hmm. But I will say, with the forty series coming out, maybe me and you, you and I, maybe we'll be able to grab a thirty series card at a slightly cheaper rate now. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, because it, yeah, um, it's just it's just sad to think that these graphics cards are supposed to be sold for like three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars, but we're buying, but but they're but we're into buying them for like eight hundred dollars, you know? Yeah, it's, I'm, not, it's I'm not doing that. It's crazy. I'm not gonna do yeah, that. Yeah, I'm I'm still very happy with my twenty sixty, but I am still really because when I got my twenty sixty, I think it was just a month or two after you. I to this day kick myself in the ass for not getting a twenty seventy instead. Mm -hmm. because like because back then they were like i said before the big bitcoin mining super rush came in you could still get them like that graphics card now the 2070 is like double the price of what it was when it came out you know yeah or at least where i am you know we pay a I lot think of I, I need a new computer so i think the next time i upgrade to let's say a 30 something um because you know yeah. i probably will upgrade my computer sometime in the next year and you know i'm not gonna pay for 40 whatever unless 4060s are cheap or something like well, that. They're, they're they're supposed to. They're good. They're supposed to be cheap, but you know, you know, they're going to yeah, get yeah. scalped. That's the issue. Yeah. Because they're hot commodities. Like, like I guarantee you, there's going to be a forty series that's like four hundred dollars or three hundred dollars. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, well, what I'm hoping like, for is the thirty ninety kind of gets mm, uh, dude, the I price would, yeah. down. Honestly, like I would just like like I I would just like a, a thirty seventy. You know what I mean? Like I think price point wise for me that's good. Like if the thirty seventy could get a little cheaper, that'd be great. Mm. Uh, and you also got to keep in mind what your CPU, what what you're running. You don't you want to make sure it doesn't bottleneck. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean right um, now I have an old CPU. I mean, yeah, it's like a I think it's a ha it's a Haswell i7. You know that's how old it is. It's like six seven years old. It's fine for what I do right now. But I've been trying to uh, not because I'm, I'm even though I am doing uh, project managing for game development. I'm not trying to be a game developer but i'm trying yeah. to use unreal 5 because it has uh applications towards the virtual production for filmmaking so i'm trying to learn it on that and my I, i've been opening it up and it's just like it's very even with the 2060 it's just very tedious on trying to get yeah. unreal 5 to work the way i think supposedly yeah. it works so my my cpu is still relatively new i think uh if i recall correctly after because i don't know tech that well but i have a lot of friends who work as software de developers uh and managers and they told me that my my pc would probably start bot well i would start bottlenecking at around a 3090 or 30 30 80 30 mm -hmm. 90 that's why they, that's why like they would at least by the looks of things with my current uh cpu a 3070 would be like optimal for it i'm, I'm probably if afford, already if i could afford one i'm you know? already probably probably already bottlenecking mine's only a quad core uh, the Haswell okay, yeah, is a quad yeah. core, you know. Yeah, I think so. you might be. I, I think you'll bottleneck on some games, but not all of them. Yeah. Anyways, so all right. Uh, wait, one last. No, no, no. Actually, you should run through your things, and I, I, then I got I have a couple one last of small thing. things here. Yeah. yeah. Go for um, it. Some of these are. Oh, well, first of all, Borderlands Three is free on the Epic Game Store right now. Uh, it seems like the Epic Game Store are doing their like things where. Well, they're going. I don't know. They they do this often where it's like they'll release big games for free. Mm -hmm. So every like every week, I don't know for how long, but every week starting now, there's going to be a big game for free on Epic Games. Currently, it's Borderlands Three, which is a, a great game. I recommend playing it with a controller if you do want to play it. I mm -hmm. think it was d developed better for controller, which is sad because the origins of the game was uh, keyboard and mouse based. I still prefer playing Borderlands Two than Borderlands Three. 
Uh, but that's just my opinion as a PC gamer. Anyways, it's free right now. Check it out. Uh, why not? Um, okay, that's... I'm not gonna... That article's boring. This is interesting, right? So... I don't really want to talk about it too much because I think it's too heavy of a top topic. But supposedly Discord, Twitch, and 4chan are going to be investigated uh, following the Buffalo terror attack. Uh, people are... Th um, I don't know why. I'm assuming it's maybe because... Because I've seen a few articles about this specifically mentioning Twitch and Discord. And I'm get Like, I don't know much about the, the shooting itself. But I'm, I'm guessing the guy must have, like, made plans in there. What's this? Mm. During the attack, Twitch became aware of the live... Oh, there was a live... That's right. It was a live stream. The guy live streamed himself doing it, I guess. Um, oh, that's horrible. Oh my gosh. Sorry, this is like me. So yeah. I'm still finding out about this stuff right now. He took 10 lives and wounded three people. Um, that's insane. Yeah. Uh, he was live streaming it. Um, Twi it look, I mean, it's not like Twitch took an hour to remove it. it they, they, they took him two minutes. Mm -hmm. So they like the live stream did get like banned and removed within two minutes. Mm -hmm. But it's like, God, I mean, I think... You could do a, a lot of horrible shit in two minutes, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, shortly after the attack, New York governor demanded that social media platforms do more to prevent these streams from being shared. Yeah, I mean, so I guess, the, yeah. it's it's hard. It's tough, right? Like, if you're going to give that capability to people, it's, it's very hard. I mean, obviously, you want to shut it down as fast as possible. But, like, yeah, it's... Uh, if... <sighs> Oh, and I, I see now why they're using video games as a violent thing right now is because uh, in the Discord logs from the Buffalo shooting suspect, uh, he directly ties an interest in nationalism and guns to playing Roblox. So the shooter himself has apparently... I don't know how the hell you tie nationalism okay. to okay, playing but, Roblox, but... Okay, but he's basically espousing uh what you call it the the replacement theory stuff which is espoused on fox news and yet mm. you know fox news continues to to keep going and tucker carlson keeps being able to oh God, you know tucker carlson he, we, we do not mention his name <laughs> I but, don't, but what i mean I like is like <laughs> you know there's much bigger issues at play you want to tie video games to to it you know what i mean just, uh, supposedly uh, there are like a lot of fascist groups in roblox which i didn't know of like, Roblox is interesting because it's a community where you can kind of create your own communities, much like Minecraft, mm -hmm. I suppose. Uh, but but because, of the, because of the way that it's structured, there could be any kind of weird group in there, you know? Yeah. Uh, this is, it's, it's sad, it's unfortunate. I now see why Discord and Twitch and people have made statements on this. Mm -hmm. I did not know that the event was live streamed. That is heartbreaking. Um, that is really, that is actually truly unfortunate. Um, let's see, uh, I got a couple other things here okay now that was still tied to the other thing um yeah what's this i know i tiktok oh yeah tiktok's gonna get into games i'm wondering how because here's the thing like on tiktok i've noticed a few people who, who are like because you can live stream on tiktok right and mm -hmm. you can make some money on tiktok if you um have enough people watching you they can get they can send gifts or like what i don't know how it works i know my uh my cousin does it sorry yeah, i don't know nephew. much about, uh, yeah i don't know much about my nephew does the stuff. live streaming thing on there because he's like one of those e-boys with a lot of clout and he gets a, a, a good amount of money just from going live and sitting there and doing nothing mm -hmm. um but i see a lot of people do that but then they str they'll play games but because it's you're streaming on your cell phone so it's like them putting the ca their cell phone behind them and you're they're recording the screen of the games instead so i don't know if uh tiktok is finding maybe they're finding a way to allow themselves to get gamers to to get on there or to be able to stream on there hmm. mm. yeah not too familiar bite dance is looking to build out what tiktok does yeah i don't know we're gonna keep an eye on that but yeah so supposedly tiktok is trying to get into the into games uh the one thing worth mentioning and this is a game that i picked up recently i've been playing the crap out of it it just came out recently it's called v rising yeah i've been it's hearing a, a lot about yeah, it that i really enjoyed it man um it's early well, access really right enjoying it. it's early access right I, th I i believe so it's um it's also pretty cheap people are saying it's uh, it's it's a lot like valheim which mm -hmm. it is but it's like valheim meets diablo in the terms of it's that it's not isometric what's the uh it's like that bird's eye view third person like kind of like yeah bird's that's, eye I, view that's isometric game 
I think it's isometric. Yeah, isometric. So it's isometric, but you can... Ex well, it's not isometric because you can actually turn your camera. Whereas in isometric, it's usually just the one angle. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, but it's still that same like bird's eye view, but you can move it around. So the game, so the game feels like Dia old school Diablo, mm -hmm. um, or like Diablo those ty those style games. It feels like that. It plays that way. The mechanics play like that, but it also involves a lot of like crafting and surviving, which those games don't have. Um, and I've been enjoying it. I've been playing solo. I, it seems like the game is mostly fun when you play online with other people as a big map. Um, yeah, it has some base building involved. I've been enjoying it. It's been fun. It's, it's, it's the only way I can put it. It's been fun. Same with Valheim. Valheim was fun. This is fun. Uh, what's nice, like I said, it, what's nice about this game is that it kind of, it's this like thing between action, action RPG and survival game. So I do recommend it to anybody looking to play it. Um, yeah, it's it's. I don't know what the price is in dollars. I paid like ten dollars for it or less. Um, so I don't, I don't think it's that expensive. Yeah, it looks like a lot of fun. This so this got announced. Um, and I was surprised by this because I don't think a lot of people play Greedful. Greedful was like this uh, RPG set in like a fantasy island. It was set in like a fantasy island, but it's like set in this weird like. It's the era of like um. Kind of like when like pistols were just invented or like people were like muskets, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like kind of like the Spanish Inquisition era, like that era. It's kind of mm -hmm. set around that area, but with like rifles being introduced. Uh, and but, but it's set in like a fantasy island with other stuff. I enjoyed the game. I think it was underrated. Not a lot of people played it. I don't think it sold very well. But the point is it's getting a sequel. That's why I'm bringing it up. I did not know that. But yeah, Greedful 2, The Dying World, it's coming out in 2024. Uh, there was a trailer for it. Announcement trailer looked pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I just didn't... Uh, see that happening because I, d I didn't know if greedful one sold very well i enjoyed it uh it's on game pass i believe as well uh if you ever want to try it out yeah. the original but yeah so there's that um this is interesting i just want to see if i can find the price because if not then it's just like no real point in talking about it because un unfortunately a lot of the the news i found in a lot of the gaming news i found is more based around sexual misconduct and that allegations and they're not the nicest things to talk about but yeah okay so this is i didn't even know about this i actually used to watch this guy a couple years ago uh there's a guy with 11.2 million subscribers his name is uh sky does minecraft and he's been i i, I think um there was abuse allegations against him and he's tried and he's now trying to sell his uh channel how, how much do you think he is sell, trying to sell it for uh, i don't know how many how many followers um, yeah. subscribers does he have? 11, 11 point, almost 12 million. Almost 12 million subscribers. <sighs> I don't know. The main, so that's his main account. How much do you 3 think million. He's... Yeah, it's got, it's got 4 billion views currently, by the way. Uh, I don't know. 3 million, that's, that's high. Yeah, it's, it's way higher. No, he's, he's still, a, look, like, I, I, I don't know. How, I would never pay 3 million. million. I'm just yeah, saying, no, I no, don't God, know. No, yeah. No, he's still asking for a lot though, like it's which is nine hundred thousand dollars. Like I wouldn't even pay that much because the thing is, like, first of all, you know that his like name and ch well, I guess you can change the channel name and all that yes, stuff, but can. still, it's like that. Ch it that never channel, works. It never works. All it, it just doesn't. But also, like, all eleven point two nine million people are gonna be like, hey, wasn't this channel like? Didn't this channel belong to this like sexual abuser guy? You know what yeah, I mean? You can change the name. You can change whatever. But the 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 big problem. I mean, besides obvious the obvious, you know uh pr issues with that but let's say you change the name and you still have the subscribers i've already learned uh, in a smaller scale with um with uh one of the channels that i used to be part of which is amc theaters is we had built that channel up to 300 400 thousand subscribers and then when we got bought by collider and moved over there they still had all those subscribers but our show and our team was no longer there and even though they had all those subscribers, the views went all the way down to like a few thousand views instead of like we were getting 50, 60,000 views per video. They were getting like a few hundred, even though they still had the 300 subscriber thousand subscribers because even if those subscribers are there, they don't care. <laughs> they don't care. Um, about the content so if they don't care about the content it doesn't matter you could have 10 million that's why uh i don't know if you remember that channel machinima yeah uh, they, yeah towards they, the end uh, they yeah. they shut down and they had like millions of subscribers but at the yeah. end they were they were getting 
thousands of views, you know, for Didn't millions they even, of subscribers. They even made a deal with, I think, I think they made a deal with... They, they got bought out by a larger company. Somebody. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A yeah, larger company. Somebody, somebody bought... Yeah, I, I, I used to love Machinima until I found out that they were they would pay their content creators ass. They would pay them mm-hmm. so little. Yeah. Like, because everybody... Like, all the, most of the videos you saw Machinima back in the day, they, they were made by third-party people trying to get some clout through Machinima. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyways, going back to this, so I actually just... This is news to me. So the girl that it happened to, I suppose she came out, she made a Twitter um, post about it and posted like a, a whole jo- like a, a whole article about what happened with all the evidence against it. So once again, every all about these allegations are still alleged, but it seems like there's a lot of proof. So um, yeah, it's what this was January 23rd. It was, it was when this came out. I didn't even know about this and I know, and this is a huge YouTuber. So it's crazy that I didn't even know about this. But yeah, so since since January, I suppose it's, I suppose he realized, hey, I'm gonna try to sell my account. I just don't see anybody buying it. You know what I mean? Um, what I do find funny is that there is like um, a description attached to it, uh, <laughs> a description mm-hmm. attached to the the selling of the channel, and it and it reads, start your brand off with a diamond play button. <laughs> Start your brand off with a diamond play button. This channel has made over eight million dollars, over ten million subscribers, four billion views, and will be ready for you to start your brand when purchased. It will be wiped and ready for new content. Streaming is enabled as well as memberships. Start stronger than anyone with this channel. <laughs> They're really trying to sell it, man. Like <laughs> I just don't mm-hmm. see maybe someone's dumb enough to buy it, but I don't think anybody will like Yeah. So, um, and then, yeah, I have a uh, one very else? last article here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know much about Discord's party mode, but uh, supposedly it will be taking a chunk out of your CPU uh, when it, w- while running it. Because um, then I, I, I got to get going as well real quick. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm unfortunately going to cut that short. I don't know much about the party mode, but um, people are saying that they've noticed like a 20% increase in CPU usage when you're using it, which is pretty significant mm-hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. But that's the last bit of uh, news that I have. Are you yeah. playing anything past week? Yeah, the, the last thing I wanted to talk about was I finally finished Elden Ring. Nice. Finally, nice. finally. Are you done yet? Um, No, because I found out that the ending I'm going to get, I don't want. <laughs> so I need to go See, and do d- some quests. That's what I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Uh, without spoilers, if you're still playing it, this is not spoiler. Basically, the ending I got was, and from what I hear it doesn't vary too much. It's like, it was just super short and disappointing for such an epic game. Yeah. I love this game. There's amazing cut scenes and like, you know, like when bosses uh, transform or go into their phase two, They're they have like phases, these awesome yeah. animations and all this stuff or when they die, whatever. There's so many cool things. The ending is so short and like just, so just sitting, non, just sit on a throne, non epic. <laughs> like it's it like, it's like, what i just did all that for it's not like the ending ruins the game it's just like you were just expecting more but anyways i'm done once you're done let's do our i i I, I, because there's an ending i want to get um with ranny that Mm -hmm. i i need i need i need to finish up um i I think it's with ranny i forget who Mm -hmm. it is i think yeah no it is with ranny yeah um but yeah i just know that currently like i did i did my research and where like i just I just have the Elden Beast left to fight. By the way, like that's just, yeah, that's just, uh, who I had on the back yeah. burner for like two weeks. I was like finishing that's all up that's, doing all this stuff. I've just got to fight the Elden Beast. But right now, if I if I fight without spoilers or anything, if I beat the Elden uh, Beast, the only thing that I'm going to be greeted by is my character sitting on a throne, mm-hmm. and that's going to be the ending. <laughs> it's like that's like that's not going to be very satisfying for me, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I I think I could be wrong. I think there's three or four different endings. Yeah. Um, I, I'm gonna go look them up online because I'm not playing through five yeah. different times to see the different endings. I'm gonna do a new game exactly, plus eventually, yeah. but I'm gonna hop off on a different game. Either Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, I have Bloodborne. I purchased Bloodborne recently. I may I think just you kind of Guardians I, just for a change of pace. Yeah, I, mean, I may just get off the Souls funny. kick for a while. Yeah. Uh, Her- Horizon Zero Dawn. I still need to finish. I just started that. I want it. It's weird. Did you play Trek to Yomi yet? Uh, no, I haven't. It's I haven't. such a I, beautiful yeah. looking game, but the gameplay is so kind of repetitive. It's it's hard I've, to I've heard keep so going from with, articles, yeah. from reviews. I've heard. It's just not no, very... I, I got really, 
I got really into Final Fantasy XIV, okay. which is an MMO, and it's it's it sucked the life out of me. Not in like a bad way. I'm like, oh, I hate this. It's just like M M MMOs can be specific. Like it can have a specific type of addiction. You yeah. know what I mean? Because yeah. you're doing little tiny tasks, so you're constantly yeah. getting dopamine. Yeah. So I've been binging that, um, cool. and I've been playing a lot of Valorant, trying to grind mm. and uh, rank up. All right, cool. All right, guys, uh, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching or listening. Make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, youtube.com slash revog. Also, you can find us on Spotify or anchor.fm for the weekly podcast. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at thinkhero or Instagram, dennis.tzng. Josh, where can people find you? You guys can find me on Twitch at it's thespis, or lowercase, all one word. Should be a link in the description below. You guys can also find me on the Revog Discord channel. I'm more than happy to talk about games. Uh, and then I think last time, last time I asked the question of if anybody would be interested in me streaming some games sometime in the Discord channel, I'm more than happy to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it could also possibly be done on the YouTube channel itself if that's something you guys are interested in seeing some gameplay. Cool. All right. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Later.